Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look at installing the Kurt 4-pole trailer wiring harness on a 2016 Buick Encore. Adding 4-pole wiring to your vehicle is going to allow you to tow a trailer or have accessories that are going to mimic your running lights, your turn signals and brake lights, keeping you safe and legal while towing. Now when not using your four pole, you can simply just tuck it in this storage compartment uh, wherever you seem uh, find a good spot for it. This is a good spot over here. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is this is going to stay protected until we're ready to use it. There's also a dust cap you can throw on there uh, just to kind of keep this from any buildup that might occur. Now when you are ready to use it, pretty easy. Uh, we have weather stripping along here that gives us enough give to pass our wires through and that way we can just simply drape this out, make sure this is flat and away from the latch and you can go ahead and close this down, hook up to your trailer and you're ready to go. This is module protected, meaning if you have faulty wiring on your accessory or trailer, if it does have back feed, it's going to stop at the module and protect your factory lighting. And this actually plugs into your factory plug, so there's no cutting or splicing on that end. And really, the only cutting and splicing required is to run a power wire up to the battery to get your 12 volt power. Now you do have to remove a few interior panels, but I found a pretty quick, easy way to do this without getting too far into it. And I did have to drill a hole to pass my power wire through. There's really no grommets to get that up to the battery. You can run it through the interior. It's gonna be a little bit more tedious. And honestly, um, it, you can definitely get it on the outside by just drilling that hole. So I'll walk you through all the steps and that way you can get your four pole wiring installed. Now to begin our installation, we're going to go ahead and try to gain access to where our tail light is. We're going to remove this in order to pass our power wire to our battery. I've looked through this vehicle and there's not really a whole lot of easy ways to pass that power wire outside of the vehicle to get it to the battery. Your other option is routing it inside the car, which is going to require a decent amount of pulling up of panels and routing that wire. So I'm going to show you the way that I found to do it. On our driver's side, we'll start by taking off this little side panel so we can gain access to this plate. Uh, now these little plastic clips here have a screw behind them, so you're going to want to use a trim tool or a flathead screwdriver to kind of get uh, kind of back here and pry on this in order to pop it out. You might even be able to get a gap up top. Um, so once you kind of get some leverage underneath it, you should be able to pop that off. Now mine just kind of flew off, so be careful there. Uh, we'll do the same over here and we'll go ahead with our Phillips head screwdriver and get these removed. Now with that out, we should be able to just pop this. There's two clips here as well as ones along the bottom. So pop those out. This should slide up and we can set this aside. Now we can gain access to this panel. We'll just use a flat head screwdriver again. Uh, there's a nice little wedge here that you can kind of just pry on and then just kind of work around the edges until we get this removed. And you're going to want to kind of uh, pull it from, I'll show you the tabs once we have this out. This one kind of wedges in the side and then uh, you have these clips here. So if you pry on this, you should be able to kind of just pop it out. But there's kind of a reference as to where those clips are. Now behind the taillight, there's gonna be four nuts that we're gonna remove as well as a screw that's gonna be on the front. But while we're in this panel, there's gonna be three of them that you'll be able to see pretty easily. The fourth one is kind of tucked down and there's a stud that hangs out, allowing you to easily get that nut back on. And to get these off, we'll be using an eight millimeter socket to go ahead and get those removed. Now they are tiny, so hold on to them. I suggest knocking them loose with the ratchet and trying to get them with your fingers as best as you can. That way you're not dropping them. And that last one, you can kind of see this stud hanging out. So you will need a deep well eight to get to that. Now there's also going to be this plastic cover here. We're going to pry this up. It's got notches on either side. So you just kind of put some leverage behind that. And that's going to give us access to our Phillips screw there. So we'll go ahead and get that taken out. Now getting your taillight to separate, sometimes it's gonna kinda uh, have build up over time and there is a seal that's a watertight seal that kind of holds it in. So what you can do is push on the studs where we remove those eight millimeter bolts and that's gonna kinda help push it along. And kinda giving it pressure along the taillight too, just can kinda wiggle it back and forth. And we should be able to get this to pop out. And this is where we're gonna be routing our power wire. Again, there's just no easy way to uh, 
Uh, normally there's a grommet or something along those lines to make it easy, but we're gonna be routing it through here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect our taillight so it's not hanging, plus we're gonna be plugging into that here shortly. So you're gonna wanna kinda peel back on this gray clip. If you need to, you can put a flat head and just kinda pry that back, that's the lock. And then push in the center, and that should unplug pretty easily. Now I'm just gonna find a spot where I know there's no wiring behind there. Um, and just drilling this out is gonna allow us to, again, pass this through and still maintain that seal. So I'm just gonna go ahead right about here and drill through our metal. Now go ahead and you can clean off any of those burrs that might be left. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, clear coat here just because it's gonna be raw metal. We don't want this to turn to rust long term. So we'll go ahead, spray that down. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'm gonna tuck this bundle of wire uh, in between the fascia and the metal here. Uh, that's gonna drop down and allow us to run this to the battery. But we'll leave about a foot and a half to pass in here, uh, maybe two foot just to make it easier to attach to our module. Now we are gonna come back later and uh, once we have everything attached, we'll go ahead and silicone this up um, just to kind of seal that. But for now we have our length of wire ran up so it'll make it easier for our connection. We'll go ahead and strip back this end so we can get our power connection made. And you're gonna grab the module and this black wire is already pre-stripped. So you can take the butt connector that's included and we'll just crimp these down. Now with any butt connector, once you crimp it down, you wanna give it a quick tug just to make sure that it's uh, got a really good connection. It's not gonna come loose over time. Now with that, we have that attached. Uh, that's gonna allow our module to live here. Now we do need to make sure that we're able to pass our wire over to our passenger side. And we're gonna be doing that on our scuff panel. Um, I think I found a way that we're able to just pass this through without having to pull any of this plastic off. So it should make it a little easier. So you'll see these little tie down hooks or cargo hooks. You're gonna go ahead and remove those. They're gonna be a 10 millimeter. And scuff panels generally are gonna have clips just like uh, the rest of our interior panels. So just kind of pry up on each side and then work your way to the middle. And this should pop off like that. So let's set this aside for now. Now, once we have that popped out, you're gonna see there's a pocket here behind the styrofoam, and this is gonna allow us to get our wires passed through, and we'll be able to kind of tuck them under. So I'll go ahead and get my passenger side, as well as our four pole wiring. I'm gonna have that live in here. Um, so we'll get those routed over. I'm just gonna pull my excess four pole and my green wire. And that's gonna allow this module to kind of live in this uh, spot here. But we'll go ahead and get this routed over to our passenger side. And we are gonna take some panels off to plug this into our taillight. On the passenger side, it's gonna be pretty simple. Just pull this back. And then we have a panel very similar to the driver's side. So we'll just pry this back. And now we have access to our taillight plug. So just as we did on the driver's side, you're gonna peel back that gray plastic clip and get this separated. We're then gonna pass our green wire through a very similar gap that we had on the driver's side and then route it up here to where we can plug this in. Now your scuff panel is gonna probably hide all this wiring. I just went ahead and tucked it kind of inside this uh, gusseted area just to kind of give it a nice cleaner look. And then we'll pass this up and pretty simple, the plug, obviously matches the OEM one. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug it into the other one and this will go into the tail light. So pass this up and make your connection. Now, if you want to, you can zip tie up these wires so the connector's not bouncing around. But other than that, on this side, we can go ahead and get those panels put back. Our four pole wiring, I'm gonna go ahead. This can kind of just live here by the spare tire for now. Uh, and that, that's gonna allow us to drape this out of the hatch whenever we need to use it, but keep it protected when not in use. So we can go ahead and get our scuff panel put back in. So just kind of uh, pop it back 
from the middle, working your way out, and then you may have to tuck the um, weather stripping back in place too. We're going to go ahead and attach our ground wire on the driver's side here. You can see the ring terminal is attached. It does have a flat side. You're going to want that against metal. Now, there's a bunch of studs here that you can use as a factory ground. You are going to need to pick up um, a nut to actually thread that on there. Your other option is included in the kit is a self-tapping screw. So find a spot where there's no wiring. Any of this metal should be fine. Uh, I do recommend kind of scuffing that area down to metal. That way it has a good contact. Um, but since the studs here, I'm going to make that work pretty easily by just kind of sliding this on there. Again, you'll have to pick up a nut to do this, but this is a great way to not have to drill and it's going to make for a good ground. So just make sure you tighten it down. You don't have to crank it, but you want to make sure that ring terminal is not going to spin around on you. Uh, so you can go ahead with a socket and get that tightened down. Now we need to mount our module up so it's not able to kind of just flop around while driving and there is included double sided adhesive here so we'll just go ahead and place that on there and there's a nice flat spot that's going to allow us to uh, stick this on there. So just kind of, I'm going to tuck it under the wire and I'm actually probably going to zip tie this in place as well but again this is just going to kind of hold this in place for us. So at this point, since we have our module mounted, that uh, power wire that we attached with the buck connector, you can go ahead and pull any extra slack out um, and feed it through the hole that we drilled, uh, just to give us a little bit of extra wire to run with up to the battery. So at this point, we'll grab our tail light plug and we'll just snap this in place. And this is going to plug into our tail light. So I'll go ahead and zip tie up my wires, make sure you have enough to plug into the tail light and then um, from there, we're just going to get our uh, tail light put back in place. But before we get our tail light put back in, I mentioned putting silicone in this hole, and that's what I'm going to do here. So uh, just an RTV uh, silicone here, just to fill that up and make it a watertight seal. So go ahead around that hole and uh, just make sure that it's coated up and allow that to cure. Once you get your tail light plugged into our uh, new harness, I'll go ahead and get the eight millimeter bolts put back in. And then we're going to head underneath the vehicle to route our power cable up to the battery. So once we routed our power wire, I just kind of followed along some safe ways to get uh, this up to the battery. The main thing is we're avoiding exhaust or any moving parts like suspension. So I zip tied it up to our hitch that we had uh, and just kind of followed these hard brake lines. Now don't zip it to the brake lines on these brackets. You can fit a zip tie through the top or bottom and that's going to secure that up. And then I just kind of followed that along. Now at this point, I kind of made a quick detour over to the side. And this is going to keep it on the same side as the battery. So from here, I routed it uh, behind the side skirt pillars where it kind of attaches. If you need to, you can pry those out. But I was able to just kind of fish them through. And that's going to hold this wire in place for the length along the side of the car. Now from here, I cut over, zip tied. And then my, the rest of my wire is... Uh, taped up to an airline tube and this is going to help me pull up our power wire to the battery now if you don't have an airline tube you can use a bunch of different things you can use a weed eater string a coat hanger anything that's going to allow you to pass that down tape it up and pull the wire up and now up on this there is the steering column as well as your axles and sway bars so you want to make sure that uh, it's nice and taut it's not going to get caught up around any of those so just be careful and double check when you pull it up so we'll just pull up our extra power wire. And now obviously we have a little bit of extra here, so we're gonna go ahead and cut off our excess as we're going to be attaching a fuse holder. I'll go ahead and strip back a little portion of this wire. And then we'll grab our fuse holder and a butt connector. So grab your fuse holder, make sure your fuse is not in it. We don't want power going through this as we make our connections. And we'll just butt connect these together. And on the other end of our fuse holder, we're going to take our uh, ring terminal that was included in the kit. We'll get this crimped down. And this is going to attach to the positive terminal. So you can pop back your cap here. And we're going to go ahead and use this 13 millimeter uh, stud here. So we'll, with our socket, we'll go ahead and get that nut taken off. So we'll put our ring terminal in place and get our 13 millimeter nut put back 
and tighten down. Now we'll take our included fuse and put this in our fuse holder. Cap this up. And I'm going to go ahead and just zip tie up the excess wires, kind of give it a cleaner look in here. Now that we're hooked up to power, we can go ahead and test our four pole. We want to make sure that it's working before we just hit the road. Now I'm using a four pole tester. You can get these here at eTrailer. Another option is to hook up to your trailer or whatever that has the four pole and have someone run through the light sequence so you can see it on the back end. And so we'll start by running our running lights. And then next we'll do our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and then finally our brakes. And with everything working properly, we're ready to start using our four pole. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt four pole trailer wiring harness on a 2016 Buick Encore.